Martin. So today we are going to talk about um, vector function again. I mean vector value again, but we are going to graph it. So you know what? Let me do something. <laughs> so let's just think about it for a minute. If my parent function is y equals absolute value of x. talking about is y is absolute value x. So what kind of function is it? This is the function whose output is what? The output. The x is input, y is output. What can we say about the output? Not necessarily, right? Exactly. So we can say that the output is always positive, right? That's the first thing that we want to learn about this function. So if I just look at some of the x values, let's say minus 2, what is my f of x? If the x is 2, minus 2, then f of x is what? 2. If x is minus 1, then f of x is 1. What about 0? 0. What about 1? Not negative, right? Oh. That put value is always positive. And 3, 3. So here are the values, x and y, input and output. So let's graph it. Minus 2, 2. So I go 2 to the left, 2 up. Here is 1. Minus 1, 1. 0, 0. 1, 1. 2, 2. 3, 3. And so on. So if I kind of extend, it goes like that. Make sense? Great. And we already wrote it down right here, algebraic. So I'll just rewrite it. Y equals absolute value of x. So you know how we talked about different properties of the graph, the domain, the range, all that good stuff? still here, right? We can talk about all those properties looking at this graph. But we have two more terms to worry about. There is the axis of symmetry and vertex. So the axis of symmetry is the line that divides the graph into two symmetrical, not equal, right? Symmetrical parts. So what is my axis of symmetry here, do you think? What is this line, axis of symmetry? What do you think it is on this graph? Which line would divide my graph into two symmetrical parts? Huh? Y axis. y axis, right? So this is the line. This is my axis of symmetry. Right? It divides my graph into two symmetrical parts. Symmetrical. So the vertex is a point. How can I, how can I define this line by the way? How do I define it? What is the formula equation that defines this line? Hmm? What is the formula for this line? Come on, any guesses? Zero. Zero what? What equals zero here? Y. Is it y like right here? What is this point? <laughs> 0 minus 4, right? And this one is 0 minus 3, and this one is 0 minus 2, and so on. So what do you think the formula is? x equals 0, right? y can be anything, but x equals 0 for all these y. So that's the <coughs> formula for the axis of symmetry here. Axis of symmetry. I'll just put A of x. So now the vertex. A point on the graph that the axis of symmetry goes through. So the point, it has to be on the graph, but axis of symmetry also goes through that point. So what do you think on my 
graph right here, what is the vertex? What point on my graph is such that the axis of symmetry goes to it? Zero, zero, right? So here is my vertex. Vertex. Very good. And when I specify the vertex, I have to specify both y and x, right? So zero, zero. All good? Okay, so let's practice. Looking at these three graphs, and I'm sorry about the printout, the quality, our printer is like that, yeah. Okay, so looking at this first graph, what do you think the vertex is, and what is axis of symmetry? What is the axis of symmetry here? Axis of symmetry. Which line? I need to divide my graph into two symmetrical parts. Three. So it's probably this one, right? Right? So how do I define it? X equals what? Three. Very good. And so what is my vertex do you think here? It's three comma one. So it's this it has to be on the graph, but my line, my axis of symmetry goes through it. So my vertex is three comma one. Right here. Okay, let's try the second one. What is my axis of symmetry here? Very good. X equals negative 2. Is this line. Divides my graph into two symmetrical parts. And then what about my vertex? 2, 3. Is it 2, 3? No, negative 2, comma. Negative 2, comma 3. Right here. It's the point on the graph, but my axis of symmetry also goes through it. Okay, let's try the last one. What is my axis of symmetry right here? X equals negative 2. Very good. So this line. And then what is my vertex? Negative 2, negative 1. Any questions about this? Yes, Mary. Why is x negative 2? Because we want to find the line that will divide right, our graph into two symmetrical parts. And this line has all its points x, y. y can be anything, but x is always minus 2. That is why this is the equation. Right. So, so let's this is not a denote, it's just that. So if my parent function is this, y is the absolute value of x. So it looks something like this, right? If I have a new function or new graph and it looks like, let's say, this. Can you tell me what the equation for this new function is, for the new graph? It's like minus one, minus two, one, two, one, two. Using this, remember how we talked about the transformations of the graph, graph transformations, like transformations up, down, right, left, all this stuff. So what happened from the parent to the new one? What kind of transformations did I do? Down to, right? That's the only transformation that I applied. So how do you think we can write this new function, this new equation? Right, so it's the original one, and then I say minus two. Remember how we did the transformations of the graph? Right? So this is a simple example, right? Now we can talk about the most generic form. Right, so sometimes we'll have these functions like you see here in exercises one, two, three, and so on, right? If you think about them as just the transformation from the parent function y equals absolute value of x. You kind of can imagine what these functions look like. Right? So <laughs> this is this formula is like the most general form of the absolute value function. 
we start with our parent function absolute value of x. We can move it left or right by having this plus minus h, right? Remember plus minus h, this is my f of x, and then we have this, you know, um, um, up and down, you just add or subtract number at the very, you know, at the very end. And then we can do the stretch or compress by multiplying by coefficient. And then we can also have the flip here with the minus sign. Remember this? Okay. So let's just look at these examples and see what happens. So the first one, what transformations did we do to the parent function y equals absolute value of x to get this one? Hmm? Left five and up one. Very good. Everyone sees that? So what does then happen to the vertex? The original vertex of the parent function, remember, was zero zero. Right? So this was the original function. This is my vertex, zero zero. What does then happen to the to the vertex? Where is the new vertex? Somebody beside it there. Eva, what is the new vertex? If I move everything left, five, up one. Hmm? So we move everything left, five. Negative five and then one. Very good, so the new vertex is negative five, one. What happened to axis of symmetry? What do you think axis of symmetry is now? Well, the, the original one was this one, right? X equals zero. What happened to it after we moved everything? X equals negative five. Everyone sees that? Leah? Yeah. So Leah, looking at the second example, what are the transformations? Huh? The second one. So we, we have it's two. minus two actually. It's minus two. So minus absolute value is minus two. Yeah, it's blurred out and it looks like a one. So just write it like that. The, the new function here is y equals minus absolute value is minus two. That's the second. Just to make sure that we are all on the same page. So what transformations happened from the parent to this new one? So it's right to, and then what else? The minus sign? Reflect. Okay. So what do you think happened with the vertex? Original one was zero, zero. Now we flipped and then right to. Where is my new vertex, Leah? When I just flip this, does my vertex change? No, right? Because it's still symmetrical around the y-axis, right? The vertex doesn't change. But then I also move to the right. So what happens to my vertex? It becomes from 0 to 0, where does it move? To zero. What about axis of symmetry? What is my axis of symmetry now? Huh? X equals to zero. Okay, next one. What are the transformations? Somebody I haven't spoken to. Jaden. What are the transformations from the parent function to the number three? Down four. What else? What does the three, the coefficient three make? Uh, what does it do? Mm-hmm. Three H by three. So what do you think happened to my vertex? 
Where is the new vertex? Mm -hmm. So when I stretch, when I look at this parent function and then I stretch it by three, does the vertex move? No, because it's at zero, zero, right? Nothing changes. Even if I multiply by three, the zero still stays. And then I down move it down by four. So what happens with the vertex? Goes down four. So what is the new vertex? Zero. Negative four, right? Because it moved down. And what is my axis of symmetry? Did it change? No. Straight in? Yeah. Zero. So x equals zero. Mm -hmm. So let's do the last one. You want to do the last one by yourself? Sure. You have a couple of minutes to do it by yourself. Who has no idea what he's doing or she's doing? Okay. Dylan or Teddy, what is what are the transformations? Okay, Dylan, since you're looking up, so we're gonna go uh, up three. Up three. What else? Um, right one. Right one. What else? So what happens, which of these transformations affect my uh, vertex? When I compress, does that affect my vertex? No. When I flip, does that affect my vertex? No. So which ones? Right one and up three. So what is my new vertex? So which one affects my X? Right or up? Right. So what is my new right? My new X? One, three. Very good. And what is the axis of symmetry? X equals one. Very good. Goes through the vertex. Everyone with us? Yes. Guys, don't just put one or zero. The axis of symmetry is an equation, so please make sure you guys put x yes. equals, okay? Exactly. It's not a number, right? It's x equals one. That's the line. Okay. What's next? So well, number five and number six, I think you can do by, by yourself. Well, at least number five, right? Work on number five.
Yeah, yeah I didn't understand that. Just say right now, okay? What is it, scratch? Right here, too, okay? You see, if you have a negative and you have a number, you just do that. If a negative is a flat, the right. number is whatever it is, stretch or compress. So I'm going to write this, and you make sure that you have a okay. 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 I got you to speak, didn't I? Yeah. yeah. So a lot of you, instead of stretch, put compress, just because it's by two, right, you're stretching. If it was by half, you would be compressing. But yes, it affects the slope, but stretch and compress, just like, be careful which one. Okay. So let's talk about the next one. What are the transformations for number six? Natalie, what are the transformations for number six? Okay, so what is my new vertex? Okay, that's good. So now what is my Y intercept? How do I find Y intercept? So I know that my I started with my parent function like that. I know that I stretched it so it became a little bit steeper and then I moved it. So now this is my new function. But I need to figure out the Y intercept. What is my Y intercept? This one, the first or the second? First or second? Second, right? Because y intercept, it is the point where my graph intercepts the y axis. So how do I find the coordinate of this point? Do I know at least one coordinate? X or y? Just by looking at it, do I know what my x is or my y is? Zero. Which one is zero? X is zero right here, right? Just by definition, like that's zero. So how do I find y? I have my formula. So I can just plug in the x into the formula, right? So my y is 2 times absolute value. I put 0 instead of x. So 0 plus 8. Correct? And then I just calculate. So 2 times absolute value of 8 is 8. That's 16. So this point is 0, 16. That is what my y intercept. 16. Make sense? Right? Yeah. yeah. So what do you think my range is? Negative infinity to infinity. Do we all agree? What is the range? The y values, right? Domain is about x, range is about y. So what kind what values can y get? This is my new function the green one. What do you think the, the possible values for y? Can they be minus 5? Mm. No, right? Because my, the whole graph is above the vertex, right? And vertex is right here. So where do I start when I talk about my y values? Zero and all the way where? Infinity, infinity right? So zero to infinity. What if one of my transformations was reflect? Then what would happen? So let's continue then. Number seven. What is my vertex? Let's not even talk about the transformation. What is the vertex? Do the transformations in your head. Which one will I first, uh, affect my vertex? David. 
graph again, right? The left graph is my parent function. And then I did the what? Did I flip it or not? I didn't. Did I move it where? Down to, right? And then my slope changed a little bit. So I'm not going to worry about the slope, but somewhere over here. So how many x-intercepts will I have? Two, right? So I need to figure out the x values and y values of, of intercepts. Do I know any of this? Do I know what is the x here or here? No, I need to figure out. Do I know y? What is it? It's zero, right? The y value on the x-intercept point. These are my x-intercept points, right? It's the point where my graph uh, crosses the x-axis. Looking at x Right? So my y is zero right here. Correct? And then I have the formula. So I know why I can figure out x. So how do I find x? I just take my 0, plug in. 0 equals 3 over 2, absolute value x minus 2. Oh, I'm in. So again, for x intercept, y is only 0. And that is why I can write as 0 equals 3 over 2 up to 12 of x minus 2. And here I have the equation that I need to solve. And you know how to solve the case. We do. Javan? You know how to solve it. So let's solve it. Plus 2 plus 2. I have 2 equals 3 over 2. Uh, absolute value of x. To get rid of my 3 over 2, I just multiply by 2 over 3. And so multiply by 2 over 3 both sides. And then I have 4 over 3 equals absolute value of x. What do you think x is? Someone, anyone? What is my x? 4 over 3. 4 over 3. Is there any other possibilities? Mm -hmm. Absolute value equals the number. The number. Exactly. It could be plus or minus, right? The absolute value of these two numbers is the same, 4 over 3. So here I have two different x's the same y. So how many points do I have? Two. Two points, just as I suspected, right? Yeah. So my x-intercepts are what? Minus 4, 3, right? 4 over 3, 0, and then also and 4 thirds, 0. Two x-intercept points. What about domain? What is the domain of this red function? Negative infinity. Negative infinity to infinity says negative. Do we agree? Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes. Because there are no, um, like, no conditions on x. x can be anything, right? Domain is all about x. There is nothing about x. You can <coughs> use any x. I feel like we need to stretch or run or something. Like everybody is sleeping after lunch. Okay, so let's see what's next. Well, this, that's what we have next, right? In the notes. No, I feel like there is something. There's two things to call on. Am I missing the page? 
So we need six, seven. Oh, yes. So right here. So number eight and nine at the bottom of your page. If parent function y equal capital of x reflects across x axis and shifts up the units, can you write the new equation? So what are the transformations? How many? How many transformations do I have, Dylan, for number eight? Two. Two. What are they? Um, reflects across the x and then goes up. Okay, so how do I write the new function, the new formula? Y equals what? Y equals negative the absolute value of x plus 3. Everyone agrees? Yeah. Yes. Okay, the number 9, Teddy. What are the transformations? Number 9. Straight by factor of 2. Okay, so give me the new formula. Plus three. X minus four plus three. Left three, down four. X plus three minus four. Like that, right? Everyone sees that? Yeah, so plus three is within F of X, minus four is within, down four. Questions? So let's do number 10. We got Oh, we have 20 minutes. We can finish everything. <gasps> Number 10. Okay, who didn't speak? Jose. You're Jose, right? What are the transformations? The bare function is still our favorite. Y equals, that's our first. Y equals absolute value of x. That's my parent. What happened over here? Number 10, what are the transformations? Right form. Right form. What else? Anything else? No. Nothing. Good. So what is my new vertex? Mm -hmm. Zero. Four. Four, zero. Very good. Right, so the x changed, y didn't. What is my new axis of symmetry? Here is my vertex, and here is my axis of symmetry. Always through the vertex. So what is the new equation? Everyone agrees? Yes. Very good. Thank you, Jose. 11. Who wants to do 11? Do it by yourself. Do 11 by yourself. Do 11, 12, 13. Unless you have questions, then raise your hand.
Actually, let's talk about this event together because it's kind of a weird one, right? So what are the transformations? The first obvious one is down to, and what about the second transformation? Compressed by half. Compressed. How do we know that it's been comp compressed? It's wider. We, yes, the stiffness of the slope changed, but how much? We need to figure out. So the original slope is what? If I just look at this, right? One, two, three, one, two, three. So it's like three over three. So the original slope is one, slope one. What about here? It's one, two, three, four, one, two. So it's two over four, that's my new slope. Half, right? So from one, it went down to half. So what does this mean to compress by one over two? So what does it mean the equation is? What is my new equation then? One half of what? X minus two. So I actually manually calculated the new slope to figure out what to multiply by. Okay? So the other two don't have that problem, I don't think. The slope is about the same. So work on the number 12 and 13. Oh, and finish. Let's finish. What is the vertex? Just to be sure. What is my vertex? Zero minus two, right? And then what is my axis of symmetry? What is zero? I can just put zero. This is the number. It's not a line. What is it? X equals zero, right? Right? Austin? Yeah. Oh, good. So work on the next two, 12 and 13. Here we are asked to graph y equals absolute value of x plus 4. Two ways to do it, right? We can either choose some x's and plug them in, get my y's, right? Or I can think about transformation. I can think what my parent function is and then do the transformations. Which one do you think is the best shot for this particular case? Mm -hmm. Like, what, what is like bulletproof method? Should I do the parent transformations or should I just choose some x's and plug them in to get some y's? I would prefer the pair, start with parent and do the transformations. And can anyone tell me why I would want to do that instead of just taking x's? Because then you know what the vertex is. Yeah, because if I'm uncareful and I just choose, you know, all the x's on one side of the vertex, how will I know where to, to like, you know, where the dental is? You see what I mean? So let's start with the parent function. So my parent function is y equals absolute value of x. So I'll just graph it. I already know what it is that part, right? This is it. So let's see. What are my transformations? What is the transformation? I'm going to go. Hmm? Act four. <laughs> Okay, so up four, right? I'll start with my vertex. Where does it move? Uh, what is the new vertex? Uh, One, two, three, four. That's it. And then I can, you know, I know the slope didn't change. There is just one transformation. So I can either like choose few points and do this carefully or be confident and just graph it like that, right? Yes. So that's my new function. So let's just check my axis and y. Now I know which axis to choose, right? So let's just try to try to you. Minus two, what is my y? Negative. So I'll just plug it, just to make sure, you know. So my x is minus two, then my y is absolute value of minus two plus four, which is? Yeah. Two plus four, huh? Yeah, six. 
Okay, so let's check. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I was very close. Good. So, six. And then what about minus one? Five. Five. Zero is what? Four. Four. And then one is what? Five. Five. And then uh, two is what? Six. Six, right? And then I can kind of check. Did I get it? My graph goes through these points. Very good. So the transformations, we already figured out, it's up four. The domain, what happened with the domain? Did it change? No, so what's my domain? Everything, negative infinity to infinity. What about my range? Four and up, right? So bracket four to infinity. Everybody's good with this? With the range? It's about Y values, right? So the new vertex, we kind of already figured out. What is it? Zero four. Zero four. Where is my function increasing? The four. So, you know, there is like axis of symmetry here, right? What is my axis of symmetry, by the way? Do we have, yes, there is a question, axis of symmetry. What is the axis of symmetry? Zero. X equals zero. Not just zero. Zero is just a number, not the line. Okay, so this is my axis of symmetry, right? Basically. On one side, it's symmetrical, so probably I have somewhere decreasing and somewhere increasing. So David, I make like a lot of eye contact with David, so he's like my favorite person now. To go to. Okay, so where is it increasing? Where is it decreasing? What does it mean decreasing? Goes down. I mean, like how down? <laughs> like I mean, this one kind of goes down from that side, right? But we have to move from left to right. Always start on the left, go to the right. So where is it going down? Here or here? On the right or on the left? <laughs> left. left, yes. So here decreasing, here increasing. So where is my increasing interval? From where to where? I'm talking about the axis. From which x to which? Increasing this part, right? We decided this is increasing part from, from here to there, right? Here. Go up. Zero to infinity. Never stop, right? It goes the same way. Decreasing is what? Decreasing is over here, right? Because it goes down. Minus infinity to zero. You have a quiz next class. Next time. Check your assignment sheet. You have a quiz. Study hard. Yes. Um.